Good afternoon. 2020 has been a year unlike any other. The global pandemic has impacted every part of our world. In the medical sector, its impact has been particularly pronounced. Patient care has changed beyond recognition. Global companies have pivoted their strategies and whole healthcare systems have been at risk of collapse. As we look ahead into 2021 and beyond, while we all hope dearly that the spread and mortality of COVID-19 will be brought under control, one thing is for sure. Uncertainty and the market turbulence that it brings will remain. Our world will never quite be the same again. And the biggest question we need to ask is how will we adapt? As a highly regulated safety critical activity, the traditional approach to the development of medical devices seeks to eliminate or at least minimize uncertainty. And our industry has evolved to embrace that highly conservative risk managed culture. But in a world where clinical and commercial needs are changing so fast, how do we do that? In this presentation, I will describe how we at Cambridge Consultants adapted our approach to respond to a national emergency and what we collectively can learn from that in the future. On the 13th of March, 2020, Cambridge Consultants was amongst a group of companies asked to deliver the impossible by the UK government to develop a sophisticated ventilator ready for clinical deployment in the tens of thousands of units in just six weeks. The specification was minimal to say the least, the clinical needs poorly understood. It was clear that not only was the time scale unprecedented, but that we could expect a lot of change in the underlying needs before we completed this development. In response to this, we had to rapidly adapt our traditional approach. We needed to find a way to deliver the product so desperately needed while not undermining the inherent safety at the core of our established ISO 13485 compliant development processes. While this work presented many challenges, as we now look back, there is opportunity for us to use this experience to improve our approach to more normal development. Four key underlying, fact underlying factors proved critical to our success. Team autonomy, parallelized and sprint-based development, integrated clinical insight, and proven tools and processes. Before I cover these in a bit more detail, I'd like to give you some sense of the challenge we addressed. The full development of a safety critical device like a ventilator would normally be measured in years. We had weeks. As we progressed through the development, we not only had to hit technical milestone, milestones, but also fit with a changing regulatory and clinical environment. Let's take a quick look at the timeline. Our initial briefing was held on the evening of Friday the 13th of March. Within four days, we were able to present a functional proof of concept prototype. Our first fully integrated system was needed for government testing just three weeks later. And our final build with full 300 document design history file needed to be ready for regulatory submission just two and a half weeks after that. All of this needed to be delivered in an environment where the clinical needs were still being defined, the system specification was constantly expanding and made more challenging, and our country was entering lockdown. So how did we do it? To deliver a product this fast demands a parallelized approach to development. And so success came down to four factors. First, we needed a large, experienced and highly trusted team that could work together. We needed to deploy the right tools in the right ways to enable that team to develop independently through remote working. We needed an iterative approach that allowed us to embrace a changing specification, and we needed to support all of this through our well-established and deeply understood processes. First and foremost amongst these, it was our team that drove success. 
actively managing and coordinating a team of more than 200 people spread across 13 time zones is a challenge in the best of times. Not only did we have to coordinate a massive global team, but every element of the system design relied on decisions being made elsewhere in the system. To make it even more complex, we were forced to manage this through an array of global lockdowns, so our teams weren't even in their usual work environments. The solution? Trust. We structured our global team into more than 20 work streams, each responsible for different elements of a highly modular architecture, and each empowered to make autonomous decisions. These work streams were trusted to work within our quality systems and to do the right thing. They were instructed to communicate amongst themselves and make collaborative design decisions without direct managerial approval. There was, of course, a clear escalation process for those design, design decisions that impacted overall system architecture and needed clinical guidance, with daily stand-up meetings to share latest updates, review key decisions, and collaboratively address system-level design issues. When developing a device like a ventilator, one thing, though, cannot be sacrificed, patient safety. While in many in our industry see their quality processes as burdensome, we proved through this project that if they're implemented in the right way, they can not only ensure patient safety, but also enable not to constrain our ability to develop at speed. To ensure this was the case, we implemented our medical development process in full. However, in doing that, we needed to recognize the importance of flexibility. Selection of a highly flexible modular architecture in the first few days gave us the adaptable system we needed to absorb changing functional demands as they came. We implemented a highly robust approach to requirements management and communication based on the package DOORS NG, which allowed us to track, manage, and critically disseminate specification changes across the team right up until the latest stages in our development. Of course, we were working in an unprecedented set of circumstances, so we configured our tools and our facilities appropriately. Our software team developed over 80,000 lines of safety critical code through three independent teams to ensure code redundancy and robust testing. These teams carried out 19,000 continuous integration jobs on both fully automated hardware and software test rigs. The need for parallel development drove an early investment in system modeling and simulation. This later paid off, allowing rapid, um, ra allowing rapid prototyping, software and hardware in the loop testing, and enabled us to test and refine modules while others were still under development. Remote working by teams under lockdown forced a heavy reliance on cloud-based infrastructure. Video online collaboration and frequent transfer of tasks across our global team to take advantage of time zones became the normal way of working. A huge level of support from our clients allowed us to reallocate facilities and resources from other projects, allowing us to dedicate labs and manufacturing spaces to this one project. Of course, understanding the clinical and user needs of a device also sits at the core of any medical system development. In most cases, a development team will have a small number of carefully managed interactions with clinicians to, get, to gather their feedback. In this case, we held daily calls with a panel of stakeholders and clinicians. This gave us a way to test design, usability, functionality, and clinical trade-offs in real time as we progressed through the project. This almost continuous formative testing and regulatory review was critical to both success and speed. And the result? After 47 days, we had gone from a one-page brief to a fully functioning ventilator ready for submission to the UK regulator. Our system was commended by the MHRA assessors as being suitable for clinical deployment, 
pending final approval, of course. Not only had we completed the device development, but also manufacturing plans, partners, and supply chain were in place. We were ready to ramp up to approximately 5,000 units a week if needed. Thankfully, the UK need for emergency ventilators at that time didn't materialize. The government's lockdown reduced the pressure on our NHS sufficiently to limit demand. And we sincerely hope that these devices are never needed. But if they are, they stand ready to ramp into manufacture. In the meantime, we as an industry have the opportunity to learn from this unprecedented development. Through this work, we have shown that you don't need to fear uncertainty in medical device development, but we do need to prepare for it. By trusting and empowering our teams, by taking a more flexible approach, and by deeply integrating clinical insight at the core of our developments, we can develop the products patients need, no matter the uncertainty that surrounds us. Thank you.